in that place or in that space that I say I'm from Detroit, I instantly feel pride. I, I feel the pride of being from a place where people automatically have a lens of violence and being from a place where people automatically have a lens of oppression and showing them that I'm that this is not that. This is not what you think it is. This is not what you say it is because I'm an example of where I'm from. Of course, like any other city, we have our issues and we have our problems, but we bounce back. I am class president of East English Village, and we are a new school, East English Village, and we have books from when my English teacher was in high school, and she's about 65. Originally, I lived like four minutes away from the school. Then my mom, we wanted to move. We moved about 33 minutes east of my school. Because the schools where, I'm, where I live at now and my current school, because they're so far different levels from each other, I don't think that I would have been successful with going into a different school with, the, with their academic level. And that all ties into the resources that we're provided. You give me a 1958 textbook of literature and history, then our students aren't updated on current events. If you give me a 2019 book, our students are fully equipped with the necessary materials to be successful in this competitive field of education because we compete with people from neighboring schools like Harper Woods and Gross Point, a school out there in the suburban areas where they're predominantly white, where all the money and investments is going to from our policymakers. And because we're a public school, we lack a lot of resources, including Title I. Y'all coming with me to the event? All right, so we're going to be at the Carpenters Hall, and this is the state of our schools. We're going to be talking to the policymakers who are in charge of how much money we get for our schools. And some of the questions that we're going to bring up is like who determines how much money we get for our water and our resources in our schools. Because, of course, y'all know we don't have a much up-to-date technology or up-to-date books. Our books falling in power. We got overcrowded classrooms. So that's some of the stuff that we're going to bring up to our elected official, which is Dr. Beatty. To get you all to write down on this board right here, what are your dreams for one Detroit students and what are your aspirations for the Detroit Public School suit? Sounds good. Great, thank you so much. Uh, the reality is in, in the context of Detroit, to truly give children an equal opportunity, to truly make public education the vehicle for social change and social transformation, and to really give this generation a better opportunity than the generation before them, you have to fund it appropriately, which means that it has to be diversified and, and differentiated based on need. I'm Lakia Wilson. I am a professional school counselor for Detroit Public Schools Community District for 22 years. Counseling is critical for these children who are living in homeless shelters, living in cars, um, may not have utilities. There are so many different situations that our children come from and um, they are still expected to perform just like our neighbors in the suburbs. There are definitely um, not enough counselors. There's a critical shortage in pretty much all of the education fields. We're talking about teachers, counselors, social workers, psychologists, speech and language pathologists. Every service that we provide as a school district, there is a critical shortage. There's a bill that is unpaid. That bill has to be paid if we're going to finally tell children that they matter as much as a child in another zip code. Smile. <laughs> Vontae Johnson, I'm a student at East English Village. It's nice for me to see you today. Nice to see you too. I'm Rashida uh, Talib, and I'm your new Congress member. That lady is oh good. God. Yeah. I'm a proud product of Detroit Public Schools. My teachers 
or black women that uh, couldn't live in certain neighborhoods because of their background, couldn't work at certain places. There's so much resilience and so much rich history and so many of my teachers and educators in the Detroit Public Schools was rooted in that. So as a young person in Detroit, uh, someone that's now in the school system and experiencing it firsthand, what is it that you would want me to fight for, to work on? One of the things that I'm um, particularly interested in getting more arts for our schools and incorporate um, more funds into restorative practices and into counselors, definitely, um, because that helps us handle the grief that we have from the oppression outside of the four walls of the school. Because I didn't go to a school where it had metal detectors and security, and it was a safe school. Um, and we had arts, we had, and I was a Detroit public school, so it, ha it has never always been this way. If I can activate folks from the outside to push my colleagues to understand and equity and education funding is real, especially when you're looking across the way and you see what they have and you don't have. I love the fact that you already know this is wrong. Some people don't even realize that that's just not how it's supposed to be. Just knowing that motivates me and inspires me to push that policy. You know, that Title I money is supposed to go to you. It's supposed to go to the kids and the classrooms. That's the whole point of creating Title I, was that we are able to elevate those that are in greater need and greater challenges. And um, I just want you to know I'm unwavering. Congratulations on this big win, not only for yourself, but the people who um, you represent. I don't, I, I need folks to understand that movement and will it comes from the outside of Congress and of the White House. Grace Lee Boggs in Detroit, she would tell you the women's rights movement, the civil rights movement, it didn't start in the White House. It didn't start in Congress, in those walls of Congress. It started in the streets and it started in movement work. So I do have like a quick question in regards to the Title I. And the question is how will you push um, our elected officials to push Congress. That's going to be part of our platform is what I talked about. I'm a musician, right? So I use, I like to use metaphors that involves music or something that involves sound. And I believe that we are the amplifiers for the community. It's not that we don't have voices. It's just that our voices, we're not projecting. So we're going to, as an amplifier, as an organizer, I'm the amplifier and I'm going to make that loud. And I'm going to make sure that there's a movement that's driven from your voice. Days are coming. Oh, I can see the we neglect the reality that schools are connected to communities and connected to neighborhoods. And I think the danger of just looking at a map and saying this school and it should be closed is just in order to help the bottom line. That creates a crater in the community and this leads to people leaving the community and boarding up buildings, etc. We can't do that in this city any longer. Today, choose who we work for. Are you invested in babies or are you invested in billionaires? And for the billionaires who's watching this, watch out because we're coming. We want to see the better in our schools. We want to see the better in our community. Shake better, better.